Go whenever you're ready. I think that was very rude of you, Nick. Why? Why'd you just tell me to go? I mean, there was no like, hey, sir, can you, I mean, that's... Excuse me, sir, you may go now if you are ready, only if you are ready, sir. What do we call this show? All right, help, help me out there. I don't even know. That. I don't have my teleprompter. I don't even know what we're talking about. Well, this is the Texags Rewind for Texags Radio on Monday, October 17th. Oh, okay. What episode is it? Uh, 2,889. Did we do the go hour today? We did. And oh. it was with uh, OB Olin Buchanan. What we we... Talk, he talked about some wild college football games like Tennessee, Alabama, as you see behind you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. that. Yeah. I just, I'm just being seen out for a moment. Wait, and and maybe. Did we talk baseball? Yeah, there there was a there was some baseball action over who, at uh, Olson and uh, who hit the 500 foot home run? I think you should practice saying his name. Chase Lavaliette. 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 Yes. Lavaliette. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. do I struggle with that name? I don't so know. Much? He's oh, gonna be good. We did have somebody on the phone today. Who was that? It was Tom Hart. He was on out on the golf course. And he's gonna do what game this weekend? Uh, sounds like uh, Texas A&M versus uh, South Carolina. Did uh, and I, uh, forgive me for not remembering. Did we have the co-owner slash executive editor of TechSax on the show today for two hours? Actually, yes. But but on here, he's only you know maybe like two minutes. But yeah, he ta- he talked about that A and M in South Carolina game. Uh, remind me what's the name of the show again? It is a uh, TechSax Radio Rewind. Thank you very much. Watch it. So you want to uh, talk a little Tennessee Alabama? Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. That was a good game. That was that was a tremendous game. It was a really good sports day. Uh, just watching because I watched the Astros until God knows what time that game ended. In between the other games going on, obviously we watched the end of the uh, the Tennessee Alabama game and most of that game. The Auburn Ole Miss game was good. Oklahoma State TCU was really yeah. good. Like there were some fun games. The Texas, Texas game, and, yeah. Yeah, if the guy from the best receiver. That Iowa State has kind of stops on his wide open route and then has to jump when he shouldn't have and then should have caught it and drops it and and then they're still they still on, have a chance they to still win. have a chance and uh, I don't know if it was targeting I when I first saw it I thought it was when yeah. I saw the replay I'm like it looks like the shoulder yeah. but uh, I was kind of hoping his knee had touched the ground a half second quicker. I think it was one of those things where if they had said that it, his knee was on the ground. That you would have, it would have stayed. Mm-hmm. Whatever the call was on the field was going to be, but you know, don't throw an interception in the end zone. Iowa State early in the game. Yeah, um, you outplayed them. They would have gotten up fourteen zero at that point. Yeah, oh, that's game. That's game time. The way that hey, even if out. you got, even if you gotten the field goal. Yeah, you know, and then and that gave Texas life. They went down and scored, but uh, Iowa State, I thought overall, uh, outplayed them. How good is Bryce Young? And, I, and Bryce how Young good is, is and Hendon Hooker? Well, Hendon both. Hooker, the Heisman is his now. It's yeah. his to lose. You know, what a what a game he had on national TV. And yes, the it was pass interference on that call that that uh Alabama fans were upset about. Yeah. Um the ultimate irony, of course. Alabama fans complaining about officiating. But uh yeah, it was it was pass interference, so he gets another shot and that Hilton kid was they, they couldn't cover him, Alabama, and uh, and then Hookers was I'm gonna they can't cover you so I'm gonna throw it to you. Yeah. What well, spectacular performance by him? Actually, a spectacular performance by by Bryce Young. The difference is it came down to Alabama's kicker missed a clutch kick and Tennessee's kicker made one. Yeah, and it looked ugly. But you know who I became the biggest fan of? Who's that? Jeremiah, I think his name is it Crawford? Jeremiah Crawford? We have to look it back up. The receiver? No, no. Which one are we talking about? Left tackle for Tennessee. He's the guy that projectile oh, the, the, vomits the toward the guy. Alabama defense and then points at him like, or you know, has his head like, yeah, you know, I'm still coming at you. And he went straight to the play. It was not like you know. I don't know how many times you've thrown it up in your life, but you, you need a second to kind of collect yourself, wipe your mouth. Nah, this nah, guy was ready. Says, let's go. No, let's go. <laughs> I, I love that. I mean, that's that's my kind of lineman right there. So they uh, they had Lamar this weekend. Great uh, atmosphere from everything that I saw online and f- from Bronny's tweets out there. A couple of notes from that game. They were basically averaging a run per inning, including uh, posting 13 runs in the first eight innings. Pitching staff allowed just two runs over the span. And uh, Jace Lavaliette, excuse me for saying it weird, three homers, including a 500-foot shot. We got Bronny's shot of that here 
uh, that we're going to uh, put up on the screen. Take a look at this shot. Uh, just the, you can't hear the sound, but the crack of the bat, or the crack of the bat, the, uh, the, the ping off the aluminum, uh, just a shot out there, 500 uh, feet, just a, a huge shot. Tab Tracy, three for four, a home run, three runs, three RBIs. Uh, you got Hunter Haas, Jack Moss, and Ryan Targach adding some homers as well. Caden Kent went four for four, uh, excuse me, four for seven with a double, two runs, three RBIs. Trevor Werner, good to see him back, two for three, two, uh, he had two RBI in that game. Chris Cortez and Brandon Garcia each worked three innings in that one. So very uh, good stuff there from the baseball side of things. Still a ways to go, um, but that run last year, a huge chunk of those guys OB are coming back this year. And that's exciting. Yeah, I expect that they're going to be a, a strong College World Series contender and yep. maybe even a, you know, depending on how some of the pitching comes around, a national championship contender. And, contender. and quite frankly, uh, some of the guys like uh, – who's the I, – I can't think of his name right now because I'm not in baseball mode. The uh, He was a freshman last year from Las Vegas, right-handed pitcher that throws really hard. Which was from Vegas? Do you remember, Tomas? Hispanic kid. Chris Cortez? Cortez. Cortez. Yeah. yeah. See, I think that's a guy you might see, you know, take that giant leap from being pretty good as that's a That's what I've heard, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the report's back from Bronny. He's looked really good out there. Uh, I need to get, head out to a, a practice and check him out this week. Yeah, I had South Carolina last week and then uh, against Kentucky, then they had the off week. Um, it, it's a really interesting story. I, I just feel like, and this is irrespective of what's going on with A&M, uh, Shane Beamer deserves a lot of credit for creating this culture that's loose and fun and his players really like him. Um, and now I really think that played a key role in, in them getting the win at Kentucky. I and mean, this is, they're kind of all in. He had a great year last year. They weren't that good, like, you know, talent wise. I didn't think they were that good. They bring in Spencer Rattler, and he is far from the former number one player in the country as a senior in high school in the Phoenix area. He's he is really he's really struggling to grasp their concepts offensively because he was just simply in you know a spread kind of air raid quarterback and everywhere else he was, including under Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma. And they got these 12, 14, not not too different from A and M in this sense. They get twelve, fourteen word play calls and he's gotta locate receivers and know the protection and all this stuff. And it's a, a bit of a challenge for him. So you will see Saturday night there will be times where he looks a little confused, or or you can see the processing, and I think you know that's something the defenses have to take advantage of. You've got to confuse him a little bit. You've got to throw new things at him and really slow him down, and and, that, and that's possible. Where I like South Carolina and where they're better than I expected is uh, on the defensive line. They're athletic. Um, the linebackers are pretty good. This is it's a solid team uh, going in and winning the road at Kentucky. Uh, is a good win in the SEC. Now, they did it against a backup quarterback. But they're a very solid team. They, they just aren't as explosive offensively as we expected them to be because I expected Rattler to be more comfortable in what they ask him to do. It's a different version of what we've talked about, but is this the weekend that we can redefine this season's expectations, which have already been redefined? So you lose this one you feel like the season's lost, right? You totally. win this one, you set yourself up for a huge game against Ole Miss, and now you're thinking, there's a way that this team can go 9-3 and three and still very hard with the offense, but you, there's a yeah. way to go 9-3, and three, which is a game off of what you were expecting anyway. Would be amazing if they could do that. I'm, I'm, more, I'm, I'm with you on this game. I think this weekend's game is the tell-all. I think what happened Saturday, not not to tell, but what happened Saturday in Columbia is going to tell us. I, I just think that any chance they have to beat Ole Miss next week hinges on this week against South Carolina. They've had a bye week. They got to rest. They nearly knocked off Bama. They played their best game of the year, their most inspired game of the year, their toughest, grittiest game of the year on the road. They learned a lot about themselves, I think. You've got to follow it up this weekend against a team that you have better players than. And, and I'm going to tell you something. It ain't close. Not, and that's not a knock on South Carolina. The reason I'm saying that is because South Carolina 
does everything you want a team to do. They play hard. They believe their head coach is, is like got them just absolutely all on board. They're having mm -hmm. fun. They're playing at home at night with a bye week themselves. They're going to be healthy. It, that is a daunting, daunting task. But at the end of the day, if you're Texas A&M, just check your excuses at the door. I, I, don't, I know you're, they're a banged-up football team. There are question marks at quarterback because Haynes limped off the field at Bama. Like, you're a banged-up team. You're playing South Carolina, and if, and if Shane Beamer in year two – can beat you in year five with the way a has been recruiting, it, it's a pretty damning indictment. Um, on the flip side, you'd also, if they lose that game, you say, you know what, this sucks. It's, it's one of those years, and it's, it probably ain't getting much better. Yeah. Um, and sure, they'll win a, couple, a game or two down the stretch, maybe even a couple of SEC. They might lose, win two of their last four SEC games. They might win three, of them, but it, doesn't feel, it won't feel like it matters. And they're going to have a hard time doing that. If you win in Columbia, and I don't care, like, style points are over for this team. It style wins. points are over. If you go win that game, and I just said all the reasons why it's tough, and it is, it, will be, it, it would be a quality win. No one, I don't think, in Aggieland, would, it wouldn't register because A&M's beating them every year. They're not ranked. They're not... If South Carolina wins this thing, they'll probably beat Missouri and, and, and Vandy and be nine, like 7-2. Some point, so that's what they're looking ahead to. Hey, can you get that uh, teleprompter? And I forget what to tell the people to do at the end of the show. Yeah, so normally it says uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, hey. You can share. Okay, why not? You know, I'd show it to your mom, your dad, uncle, aunt. Yeah, third it'd be, cousin. It'd be fun. It would be great if I could come up with a new bit to end the the YouTube show with, but I, I don't have it. I yeah. Do you have any any ideas? Uh, it's a Monday. Maybe tomorrow. All right, uh, that'll do it. We'll see you next time, guys.